Hi everyone and welcome to this speed painting or time-lapse version of my recent Harris Hawk study on pastel mat. I'm going to be making some pretty in-depth tutorials from this for my patrons over on Patreon, but I hope you enjoy this short narrated version giving you some tips along the way. I'm working in soft pastel, mostly unisons, and some Faber-Castell pastel pencils. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and I hope you enjoy the video. So for a change, I thought I'd take you right from the beginning on this as I work a little bit differently on pastel mat. On the velour, I often have to transfer my initial sketch onto the paper, as it's not that nice to sketch directly onto and you can't rub out your lines. But on pastel matte paper, it's a lot nicer to sketch directly onto. You can't rub out your lines completely on this paper, but it's best to start off lightly until you're a little more sure of your proportions. I also use a grid quite a lot of the time just to speed me up in getting the line drawing onto my paper. So giving myself a very quick outline and then it's straight on to work on the background. I'm going to do a more in-depth video on this bit of background uh, as it took quite a while to build up enough layers to really give a lot of depth to it but also create enough blur back there so that my Harris Hawk would really pop out of the picture. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Would you like to see a more in-depth video here on YouTube for this background? And I love playing about with bokeh photography with that blurred effect. And I took these photographs at a wonderful falconry place called the Parahawking Project here in the south of Spain. I'll add links below. And I got to meet Maya the Harris Hawk and that was a really exciting day. We got to meet lots of birds of prey and I have lots of photo reference to work from and I'm planning some pretty big pieces with a lot of uh, landscape and movement in them. I've got a lot of action shots of the birds. But before producing something like that, I would like to do some in-depth uh, head studies, really having an up-close look at the birds because it's not often that you get to see them so close up. This was my first experience with them in person. So I have so much detailed photo reference and I'd like to make studies like this where I really get to hone in on every bit of detail. And pastel mat I find is a great paper for that. I've started producing a lot of my uh, more detailed head portraits even for my commissioned work on the pastel mat just because of the amount of detail you can get in there for certain types of subject matter when you really want a lot of crisp detail it is wonderful for that. I do miss the, the softness and the extra depth that I feel you get from velour, but for certain subject matters I'm really loving this paper. So you can see I make use of uh, a lot of the soft pastel sticks and I don't tend to block in an overall uh, layer underneath. I come in straight off with some of those textures and the direction of the feathers. Always trying to create the texture from the early layers. And as always, little bits of highlight really bring an area to life. But in general, I'm working from dark to light. And a nice paper like pastel mat can hold many layers, so you don't have to worry about being able to apply those bright highlights at the end. So I think half the battle with soft pastels sometimes is uh, you're often scared to go too dark. But it's that uh, deep contrast that you really need in your work to give it a real 3D appearance. And I do make use of pastel pencils. I made uh, a huge amount of use of them in this piece just because of all those uh, fine feathery details. So I do a lot of the early work with the bigger sticks on this piece and then you'll see a lot of 
uh, re refining and tweaking at the feathers towards the end using those pastel pencils. But I really did use a lot of lovely, vibrant, unison colours to try and capture some of the sunlight and how it was hitting Maya. Her feathers really do glean in the sunlight and the photo reference that I took of her was lovely and detailed but I'm not the best photographer so I was drawing on my memory from when I was there and how the light was hitting each feather. So photo reference is great to work from. I love being able to get my own really in-depth high definition photographs but you're always working a little bit from your memory or your imagination as well trying to enhance what you can see in the photograph and often I do this a little bit with colour choices so I'll try and exaggerate my values a little bit And that's something you can play with once you get some idea about how colour theory works. You can really use colour to break away a little bit from um, trying to replicate a photograph absolutely exactly. Instead, being able to paint it uh, through your own eyes lens. And I think that's where a lot of artists who work from photographs uh, really make their work their own. In your own individual mark making, in your own individual palette choices, we all, even though we could work from the exact same photograph, all of our paintings will look quite different. So even people working from photographs are producing uh, really original work. And I'm going to do a video on that very soon, actually. It's a really hot topic these days, the whole photorealism uh, versus other types of realism, as I think there are a lot of different ways to paint reality. And I know that photorealism isn't always something that I'm actually striving for. And I find that when I work on pastel mat, I, I end up going into the amount of detail that brings it somewhere closer to photorealism. Uh, it's not actually something that I'm striving for, but I do enjoy it and I do love getting really lost in detail in a little piece like this. But the next time I paint this bird, I'm going to tackle a much larger landscape version with her in flight and a lot more action and hopefully capture some of her motion. And in that one, I won't be going into quite as much fiddly detail as this. I'm going to try and capture that a little bit more expressively. Try and capture a bit of her flight. But I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing this build up and I hope that you've got some tips from my narration. If you like my videos, please make sure you've subscribed here on YouTube for all my future content. And if you'd like the real in-depth tutorials that come from these videos, do check me out over on my Patreon channel. All details in the links below. Thanks for watching.